Hey, we're live. What's going on, everybody? It's another at home exclusive. This time, my guest is the one and only Brent Smith of Shine Down. Welcome, man. Welcome to my uh, dining room here. What's happening? Uh, not too much, man. Uh, let me start off by saying this um, Shine Down songs are the hardest songs to sing on karaoke by far. By far. Uh, you know, yeah. I they they're they're a little they're a little challenging they can be they're challenging sure. for they're challenging for me and i wrote the parts <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know like uh, i i consider myself an okay singer but i i used to try and do uh burning bright on yeah. karaoke and uh, uh i would i would do fine until i got to the middle of the song and then uh, at, at some point someone had to be like don't try that one anymore <laughs> Um, it's it's kind of funny. The other day I was asked the question like of our entire catalog. Is there any song that you would um, if you could go back and maybe recut the vocal? Would you do it? And I was like, no, there's not really anything that I can think of. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. I would probably redo I Dare You because it's a high C and it's a, uh -huh. it's it's a regular C, which is a very like the entire chorus is it's high. And right. I'm like, I would have probably gone in and maybe dropped it down a half step. But the funny thing is, is when you're in a studio and you're looking at the song and it's fresh and it's new and you have all this adrenaline going and you're very excited, you will question the key of the song if you need to, to ask yourself, well, okay, well, are you going to be able to sing that in 10 years? Are you going to be able to sing that in 20 years? You know, with especially the way that we keep our schedule with touring and what have you. The reality is, is I've always looked at it. Um, it's forever. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm not going to necessarily drop it down when I'm going into the studio to actually cut the vocal because you want to give it everything you've got. But my right. band, they joke that I walk into uh, vocal sessions with a shovel. They're like, <laughs> yeah, you're just digging a hole for yourself. <laughs> yeah, because not only are you singing it again in 10 years, you're singing it every night most of the time, especially when it's you know one of the new songs. Yeah. A lot of times, though, man, I will tell you this straight up uh, to anybody that's out there. Um, and that's what they want to do. They want to tour for a living and they want to be a singer. Um, uh, I would tell you that it is like being an athlete. Uh, the right. more you the more you train, the more you practice, the more you do it, the more uh, you are able to condition yourself. I'll also tell you straight up, man, like I know the back in the day, the quintessential drug, sex and rock and roll thing worked like maybe in the late 60s into <laughs> the 80s and 90s. But uh, in the 2000s, man, especially in this day and age, uh, the whole drunk rock star or drug addict rock star, it's not sexy, man. Not nope. sexy one bit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, record labels don't put their money behind people that they don't know if they're going to be able to deliver for the audience. Because we have one element, one very, very important element in Shinedown, and that is we have one boss. It just happens to be everyone in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you, you do have to, your body is your temple, man. When you're a singer, uh, you can't plug it up. You can if you right. break a string, you can't grab another guitar real quick. If you drop a stick, you can't pull one out, you know, and grab a, a spare or whatever, man. Mm -hmm. You have to condition yourself uh, if you're going to be a professional singer. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a thin piece of flesh. You know, you, you can replace a guitar string. You know, it's it's a thin piece of flesh you're working with here. And uh, you wouldn't dunk your guitar in a, in a bucket of acid every night. Why would you damage your body, you yeah. know, uh, with drugs every night? You know, it's, yeah. uh, it's just common sense. Yeah, there's, there's no reason for it. And to be totally honest, if you have a platform uh, where people are giving you this platform to be yourself and you're speaking for the people because there's something about what you do resonates with an audience, they don't deserve anything except your 100% best. It's not about you anymore. Once you release a record or you release music, um, it doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to the public. So how are you staying in shape? Speaking of which, uh, during, during the quarantine, do you get to go out and run and stuff like that? Man, I mean, the reality is I'm in Tennessee right now. I was in California. I arrived in California at the beginning of the year in January, and I had not left California. I was there during the entire quarantine process, um, and uh, I just got back to Tennessee. I'm leaving for Florida in a couple of days, but I make no excuses, man. <laughs> like I, uh, One thing is that if, if anyone knows my kind of fitness history and what have you, back in 2011, 
Um, I just made a conscious decision that I was going to start learning how to exercise and I was going to learn how to eat right. And I just needed to get my physical fitness and my mental fitness uh, in really, really good shape. So from 2011 to 2012, I lost 70 pounds. Um, I, I did that with uh, the Insanity programs and my boys out in Cali, <laughs> my, Mike and Rich uh, in uh, Westlake in the Calabasas area. So big love to the West Coast. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, man, I just, you know, Sean T who's a, you know, a celebrity trainer and, uh, the beach body programs, they've really helped not only myself, but the band, like when we tour, like we're with each other all the time, we work out together and you, know, you don't always need a gym, you know, those beach body programs are really, really great. Um, sometimes you just need a six by six space, man. You can do a lot with your body weight. You just need to, you know, you just need to learn and train with those programs and, and learn what those teachers teach you. Uh, but getting your heart rate up, man, is not that difficult. No, <laughs> no, it shouldn't be. Is it true that you get up at 4 a.m. every day? Is that part of your routine? Man, I wish I could say I get up at 4 a.m. I did that for a little bit and yeah. then uh, reality set in. <laughs> um, I think what might have been uh, it, what it, it the 4 a.m. It Yes, 4 a.m. is a part of my life, but I'm usually going to sleep at 4 a.m. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting, especially when I'm on tour, man. Like my day doesn't start until right around noon, but I'm not going to sleep until like 4 a.m. So like the cycles are different because it's very regimented out there, almost like the military. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, there was a moment in time where I was a part of the 4 a.m. club with, you know, waking up. But yeah. uh, yeah, here, uh, here in the last couple of years, it's been more like going to sleep at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, I do that every day as the morning show host. And I thought anyone who does it who doesn't have to has got to be crazy. So, uh, Well, it's, it's interesting, too, because I understand, like, you know, like Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg and obviously Dwayne Johnson, uh, a.k.a. The Rock, they're a part of that club. Um, and I understand why they do it, because they're not just actors. You know, right. they have immense amount of different production teams and, you know, they diversify. I mean, The Rock just... Um, he just, you know, he's got the Titan games going on, not to mention he's got Terra Mana Tequila. So he's always, you know, he's got a lot of stuff going on. Same thing with Kevin Hart. They're working with different production companies. Mark Wahlberg is just, I mean, that guy is essentially, um, I mean, that, you know, the Bostonian in him uh, really kind of shines through. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of these guys and CEOs and certain people from like that own big corporations mm -hmm. and what have you, they got to be up at 4 a.m. because, you know, they're, they're up before the rooster crows for yeah. a reason you yeah, know, those you guys have to be productive those guys you mentioned i mean these guys are uh businessmen you know they're entertainers yeah. sure but they call it show business for a reason these guys are their own ceos they're also busting their ass yeah for yeah. sure you you can't you can't get up at noon and pull that kind of thing off not normally no <laughs> so let's let's talk uh music here uh since we've got you on the line yeah. uh At atlas falls you guys released it in late march uh, i've been playing the hell out of it on uh representing it right here yeah, there yeah, you go. yeah uh so there's uh you know a t-shirt as you just showed um yeah. available and you can download at shinedown.com mm. uh proceeds going to help out direct relief can yeah. you tell us for the listeners who don't know what is direct relief who are they what do they do so what they do is they're non-political, they're non-biased. They've been around since 1948. They were established in Santa Barbara, California, and they work with all 50 states in the U.S., and they also work with over 100 countries. Their sole mission is to, they are the Calvary. And what I mean by that is they are the ones that make sure that the medical community and the scientific community during times of crisis, whether that's poverty, whether that's a natural disaster, whether that's a pandemic, um, wherever they are needed to essentially get um, the resources that these men and women need on the ground during these times, uh, they're the ones that ship it out to them, that get it to them, um, they get on the ground and uh, their, their, their principal purpose of that is to make sure that they give those men and women on the front line the, the elements in this and, and the products and the things that they need in order to save as many lives as possible. So when the pandemic occurred, um, when I was in 
uh, California, myself and Zach Myers were working on the double Smith and Myers record that's going to be coming out this year. And we just were not paying attention to what the media uh, was putting out there because we were in a studio 12 hours a day. So right. the day that we found out that South, by Th- that South by Southwest had been canceled, we were kind of like, what's going on? And then so you fast forward into you know that first week where not only our government and our country, but a lot of countries were like, we need to go inside and, and quarantine. And it was one of those elements where I think a lot of people remember, um, you know, they were doing, we're not asking you to go to war. We're asking you to watch Netflix for the weekend. <laughs> uh, that did not last very long for me. I think I lasted maybe an hour on a Saturday before I was like, I've got to figure out what's going on. Cause I knew nothing about COVID-19, a coronavirus, what a pandemic was. Right. And I'd never heard the term social distancing. And so I started to dig into everything that it was and that it is. And obviously in the last 72 hours, there has been a lot of uh, the, the narrative is now switched in regards to COVID-19 and whether or not, um, what we actually did was necessary. Um, and <laughs> because there's all of these conflicting things coming out now, but this is what I will not, uh, this is what I will not back off of. When you look back at almost now, four months ago, and it was chaos. And that's one of the things I was so shocked that I didn't even know who Direct Relief was. And the reality is, is that my God, are these men and women like necessary because you see all of the crises. They were here before COVID-19. They'll be here after COVID-19. They are essentially they are the real deal cavalry. And, you know, just you can go to directrelief.org and find out about what they do, what the programs are, how you can help. Um, And they do everything in real time. So on their website, you see exactly how much PPE they put out, how much money they've raised, where those, um, you know, where those shipments are going to, who's actually getting them. And they do all of this in real time. So when we reached out to them, I brought this song back from our catalog that had never been heard before. It was a song called Atlas Falls. And in the beginning of the pandemic, I just saw everyone everything was negative and everything was just, people were so scared and so beside themselves. And Atlas Falls was a song that was written during the Amaryllis writing uh, cycle when we were putting together our fourth album, Amaryllis. It didn't make the album because it was a bad, you know, that it wasn't a good song. It's just, we write a lot of songs for records and not all of them make it for whatever reason. But I always had a kinship with Atlas Falls because it's a song about, it's optimism and it's about, pushing through and overcoming adversity, but doing it united. And so what we decided to do is once we contacted Direct Relief, we actually created a partnership with each other. And so in the beginning of it, and you can still get the Atlas Falls shirt right now, um, but I want to let everybody know we're now approaching the $400,000 mark um, that Shine Down Nation and everybody that has gone out and not only gone, you can go to the website and you go to, uh, you'll see the link for the Atlas Falls shirt. You click on the link. And when you buy the shirt, um, you get uh, Atlas Falls as a download at that time. Obviously, the DSPs have the song now. Um, but at the time, the shirt was $50. And it costs $5 to make the shirt. But 100% of the proceeds after that go directly to Direct Relief. And uh, we're approaching the $400,000 mark. Now, wow. we brought this shirt from $50 down to $30, uh-huh. but we also want the public to know that this shirt is a representation of our um, our love and respect for not only the human spirit, but also direct relief. This shirt, all the money that is raised for, you know, for all of time, uh, it will always, that money will always go to direct relief. So if you buy the That's Atlas great. Falls shirt, it's that money is always going to go to direct relief. Right. Brent Smith's not going out to lunch on your t-shirt money. No, I'm not. <laughs> And also the lyric video that's on uh, YouTube right now, um, you can go on there and you'll see a donate button. If you want to donate, you can donate, you know, uh, you don't have to donate $50 or, or, or a big amount of money. You can donate $5, $10, whatever you have. And you can go to directrelief.org when you're learning about Direct Relief and what they're about. You can, dire- you can, uh, you can donate to their site as well, and it can be any amount. So you actually wrote the song uh, many years ago, as you said. It kind of stayed in the vault until now. Yeah. Uh, 
it's all, it was kind of a weird kismet there. It's almost like you knew deep down there'd be a time when people would really need the song. I yeah, it's interesting. We've been asked about the song uh, many times in regards to. So when did you find time to go in the studio and like make <laughs> the mix sound more like 2020? Or I'm sure you redid the the lyrics and you, how did you get back in the studio? I'm like, we didn't do that. The song that you hear today is the same song it was eight years ago. Um, and uh, I knew when the song was written that it was going to be heard eventually one day. I didn't realize it was going to be to this magnitude. Um, but I'm, I'm really proud of being able to, you know, in a lot of situations right now where there is a lot of unanswered questions and there's a lot of negative, uh, that's out there. Uh, we wanted to be an example of not only optimism, but perseverance. I mean, in Shinedown and our, our fan base, whether they've been there from the beginning or whether they're just kind of finding out who we are it's always been about the yin and the yang. You know, everything that's good has a little bit of bad and everything that's bad has a bit of good. It's the yin and the yang and it is balance. But the goal is to not be afraid of those moments and times where uh, you have to kind of push through walls, um, is to accept those moments in time and be a part of the solution. Don't be a part of the problem. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Smith and Myers. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, you and Zach course uh yep. playing uh is it, is it a full acoustic album that you've been working on it's really uh it, it's crazy exciting man because um yes it is but it's a little bit more than that it's not just every song an acoustic and a vocal um there's a bit more instrumentation uh that's going into this also it's a double album so it's 10 covers that were really picked by the audience. We, we allowed the audience to like submit as many songs as they would like to hear me and Zach perform. Because if you go back to 2014, we did the first Smith and Myers, but that was for the fans. We did these two EPs, five mm -hmm. songs a piece. They were cover songs that the audience is, you know, that the audience picked and we put it out. And honestly, we never really thought anything from it um, when we released it, but there was such a demand for it that we decided to give it a shot and try to tour it and see if anybody would come out. To our shock, um, a <laughs> lot of people came out. Um, and so we decided with this project that we were going to, you know, we were going to go for it um, and kind of go a bit more in depth with it. So there's 10 original Smith and Myers songs for the very first time. And then another batch of 10 songs that were really submitted by the audience that we looked at the percentages of everything and we picked the 10 that we felt like people really wanted to hear. Um, and we're, uh, we're in the mastering process of it right now. We're, uh, we're in the home stretch of, of getting it prepared for the audience and for the world. Um, and you're gonna see uh, some brand new news to come very, very shortly about when that's gonna be coming out. Awesome. So you got the majority of the album tracked before uh, the COVID-19 thing happened. You were uh, yeah. pretty much done in the studio by then, right? We had 17 of the 20 done. And then our producer had left early in the pandemic to go to Hawaii thinking that he was going to be able to come back <laughs> because uh. he went, but he went to Hawaii because he had, he had some houses down there that he was renovating. He was only going for like four or five days and then right back to the studio. He got quarantined for 14 weeks. Wow. You know, so I had to wait on him in California. And in the meantime, you know, here I am in a hotel um, by myself. And I just I just started to, you know, I just went into action, basically um, trying to be a part of once again, you know, the the solution and not part of a problem. And so once he got back, we had two weeks. We went back in. I finished vocals on the last three songs that needed to be done. And then I just recently left like. I think I 10, 11 days ago, I left California. Um, and uh, But this was always a creative year for Shinedown. Um, we finished last year in December with Alter Bridge. Um, we finished that tour with them in London at the O2 Arena. We filmed that show, and that's actually going to be released here shortly to the public as well. So you'll have an hour-long Shinedown show live from the O2 Arena that we're going to be releasing here in a bit. And then also the Attention Attention film is in its final stages of editing, and we're getting that ready um, for hopefully, fingers crossed, um, we're going to be able to release it in theaters because we're finding out today that uh, theaters are starting to look at in certain areas right now 
I, I don't want to put too much out there because I just kind of got this uh -huh. down the pipeline a little while ago because I kind of know some people that can kind of tell me what's going on. Sure. Um, but it looks like a, a, a pretty large amount of, uh, of theaters are going to start opening up uh, mid-July now. Uh, you have also um, Disney, Universal, they're going to be opening up in July. Um, that's, you know, they're not going to open these parks, man, without having knowledge that it's safe to do so. I just want to let people know <laughs> that. And the narrative, look, I mean, everybody's going to have an opinion about this, but look, the narrative is changing on COVID, you know, because people, and we all know what happened 12 days ago. Mm -hmm. And I wish that it was under different circumstances. I really, really wish yeah. that it was. But the reality is that if you put people inside and you tell them to stay apart for with no real plan of opening it back up, you, you are going to see some form of anarchy eventually. And what I want to say here, and I know media will pick this up and they'll take our words here. So I'm going to be very, very clear with what I just said. Sure. What happened was something that is appalling. And yes, I'm talking about the murder of George Floyd. But the reality is you saw how social distancing went out the window. Immediately. Because, because it was necessary. Right. And not only in America, but the whole world. And now looking 11 days in, 12 days into this, they're not reporting cases. They don't have hospitals filled with patients with positive COVID-19. And look, there's a moral side of this on every level. The people that are most vulnerable to this, that percentage has not changed. Nothing has changed about this virus. The reality is that I think that people have to understand that we need to be respectful of the community that do have a compromised immune system, that do have pre-existing conditions. But in the same token, are you weighing that out from whether or not you go outside and you could infect someone if you have it or if you even know you have it? Or is that the case? Or are you supposed to be susceptible to being homeless? because of the unemployment rate, okay? Right. The, the, mark, the, the stock market in the last 48 hours has rallied unlike anyone has ever seen in human history of the stock market. And that's because of people. That's because of perseverance. That's because we are meant, we are the, I have always said that human beings are at our best when we need each other. Right. And my God, we need each other right now. <laughs> Don't we? Yeah. And, I can... I, that's, and that's, and that's, and I'm, I, I have to be outspoken about this because I don't want people to be afraid to live their life. Right. That's not what, that's, that's not living. And the scientific community, I think the scientific community needs to have a real conversation with the real world community. If you catch my drift, mm -hmm. we're going to need to do this together. And the absence of, a plan or or leadership remember in the united states of america that that constitution is in place for a reason and there's a reason why on the front page of that constitution in the biggest lettering it says we the people don't lose sight of that i can definitely feel your passion about this um and i know that you've been known to take pain your own pain and turn it into creativity yeah. So when you, you look around, you see the pandemic, you see the protests, you see yeah. the cities on fire, people yes. are angry. Is that yes. feeding you create creatively? I mean, will, will that resonate on a future Shine Down album? Obviously, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, but I'm going to be honest with you right now, man. I, I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm listening more than anything right now because other individuals need to have the floor right now, okay? And what I'm doing is I am being very attentive and I am listening to all communities, but I'm paying attention. And our audience, like I said before, um, being the main lyricist in Shinedown, 
I've always taken that as a very uh, important responsibility because people have given myself and Barry and Eric and Zach a platform to be ourselves. Uh, but mm -hmm. in the same breath of that, we want the public to be themselves too. And they should have that right to discuss and to talk about what's going on. And, you know, but lose no sight of we're, we, we've got to do it united. We can't do it. Um, we can't do it with walls. We, we've got to be able to do it with allowing the other side at times, even if you disagree, let the other person speak. Let the other person talk. OK, and let them tell you how they feel. And then you will have your opportunity to um, say your piece as well and then figure out what needs to be done and and do it. Right. Uh, you have to listen. You have to be there for people. I mean, you have to be, um, you know, there are some people that have the role to be as, you know, uh, how do I put it, like a sounding board, you know, right. Um, and when you're in the spotlight, you know, do you ever feel a responsibility to kind of be the sounding board for, for issues like that? I do when I, when I don't see anybody else, you know, mm -hmm. taking an initiative. And by the way, even with, you know, that soundbite of what I just said, um, because me and the media have a very interesting relationship in the last <laughs> five months. Um, but that, once again, that's why we have freedom of the press and freedom mm -hmm. of speech. Um, I'm pretty out front most of the time. If I see an injustice or I see something that needs to be uh, brought up, I'm pretty quick to bring it up. Yeah. Um, because um, I don't want to see, um, I, I want to always be able to see the good in people. And a lot of times, 90% of the time, it's usually there. But what you have to also do is you have to be aware of all your surroundings that if you see a, if you see poison being slowly dripped in its very unique way into society, you got to you got to close that tap off very quickly. Right. Or it will spread or it will spread. <laughs> right. I think we all wish we had the power to uh, to do that, you know, as a whole. Um, and I think I think more, we do have the power to do that. We say that was say the more people get together, uh, the more power we do have. Yeah. You know? I mean, look, you know, everybody's going to have an opinion about everything that's going on right now. And once again, that's your right to have right. an opinion. But right now, the focus is if you're looking for leadership, look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Because you have it in you. Right. And anybody that's watching this right now that is questioning whether or not they can actually create change or they could actually benefit the world or society in a positive way. I'm here to tell you right now, you 1000 percent can do that. Right. And look what you're doing right now. You're on social media. You know, uh, it's a great tool to have. It can be misused for sure. Totally. Uh, but it's a great tool to have. It gives everybody uh, the voice that they need. Yeah. You know? And the other thing too, bringing it back around to, you know, why me and you are on this, you know, why we're having this you know, discussion today, I will always bring it back to music because music saved my life. It just yeah. did. My son is number one. He's the number one thing in my life that mm -hmm. I, I work as hard as I do for him. And because I love it, my, my parents and my, my family's always said, find something that you love in life, son, and you'll never work a day in your life. Right. And, um, but you look at how important music is and how important live music is to bring people together mm -hmm. and not even that, but also competition and sporting events and, you know, watching that human spirit, seeing healthy competition, having mm -hmm. that love for, you know, you know, competing against one another and with one another. Those are all human interactions. We're meant right. to be around each other. We're meant to inspire and motivate each other and give each other confidence and, we're going to have to do that. You know, we, we're not going to get, I, I don't think that you're looking at a world that's just going to be able to go, all right, everybody go back to normal mm -hmm. <laughs> because I don't think that that might be the best way to say it. I don't really like the term new normal because I don't even know what that necessarily means either. Start living your life, you know, and start, start being respectful <laughs> of everyone right around you and and understand that that gift of art and that gift of music and that gift of togetherness 
Um, you're not promised that tomorrow. Right. So what you do on a daily basis is going to affect your future and other people's future. But I think that the whole world is crying out, you know, louder than ever um, that they want to be with each other, that we were meant to be with one another. And we need to do it safely. We need <laughs> to listen to people. Um, that our authorities in those types of areas, you know, in the medical community, in the scientific community, but there has to be a plan and there has to be a way that we can help heal each other. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we are uh, certainly looking forward to being able to see Shine Down again. Uh, we actually took a whole bus full of listeners out to see you guys with Godsmack in Chicago, uh, yeah. like 2018. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when it's time, I, I got to say, we'd love to see Smith and Myers at the Apollo Theater here in Belvedere, a nice intimate. I guarantee you that will happen. That's awesome. I that guarantee really you that good will to know. <laughs> That's really good to know because, uh, I mean, uh, as far as the intimate venues around here go, Smith & Myers would fit right in there. A nice little pocket for you, for sure. We're, we're, we're working on it. I'm, I'm finishing up. Uh, I got to go. Uh, I got to leave Tennessee uh, in a couple of days. I'll be in Florida through the rest of June. And then mm -hmm. actually July 1st, I head to Charleston, South Carolina uh, with uh, Zach and Eric and Barry as we begin the writing process for Shine Down 7. Okay. So that's going to be coming out uh, next year. That's something we can really look forward to. Um, yeah, and, working uh, we, on it really, really hard right now. We hope to get something new uh, from Shine Down pretty soon. And, uh, you know, it's got a little bit heavy. So I'd like to lighten the mood a little bit before we, uh, before we exit. Uh, our, <laughs> our listener, William, asks, and this is verbatim. I'll even put it up on screen for you. Would you rather have, have nipples it. for fingers or fingers for nipples? <laughs> I don't even know how to register that. That might be the most we have. I have a say, that might be the the most wackadoodle question <laughs> I have ever heard. Kudos to William. Seriously, I mean, yeah. Would I, mean, I rather have nipples for fingers or fingers for nipples? Holy moly! Um, can I say neither? <laughs> I think you could say neither. You could also go with both, you know, have the nipples on one hand and then have the fingers on one nipple and just kind I, of have. I don't even know what that's supposed to do. <laughs> I don't I, know. You know, like Ricky Bobby, like Talladega Nights. I'm not sure what to sure. do with my hand. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to not plead the fifth, but I'm going to have to say, I don't think I want to do either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I will accept that answer. I'm sure William didn't really uh, expect you to have a clinical answer for it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a that's a that's a uh, that's a unique question. Uh, how about this one? Uh, Christy says that she is fangirling something fierce right now. Uh, do you? Can, okay, let's let's connect that with a question. Do you? Can you remember a time where you quote unquote fangirled or fanboyed over a, a rock star or a movie star you got to meet or talk to? I've never like completely in front of them, like, you know, just, you know, freaked out. You yeah. know what I mean? um, it's all been internal. Right. <laughs> um, uh, twice. Um, actually, three times. Uh, way back in the day, 2006, uh, we were on tour and we were doing festivals, um, uh, festival circuits in the summertime of 2006. And we were able to, with those festivals, we did six shows at the time with Velvet Revolver outside of those festival shows. So we had these kind of one-off six shows with them sure. where we were opening up. And I got to meet Scott Weiland when he was like in great shape and he was sure. clean. And I mean, and he was the sweetest human being. And, um, uh, and I was so nervous to ask him for a picture and he couldn't have been kinder. And, um, you know, took a picture with him. And I mean, I was, and he knew it too. Like, cause I, I put my arm mm -hmm. on his shoulder and I was just shaking, man. And he, <laughs> and he never ever was just like, Hey man, you okay. He could just, you know what I mean? He was just a pro, you know? Yeah. And, um, so that was one time I kind of fangirled out. The other time was in Los Angeles, California. I was at the riot house when they still called it the riot house, which is the Hyatt on sunset. It's now a different hotel. I don't know what it is now. Um, but for, uh, for many years, um, uh, little Richard lived on the top floor of the, uh, the riot house. And so we were staying there and I got, uh, I was on the fifth floor 
and I got in the elevator and I was going downstairs to meet the rest of the band because we were going out. Um, I think something with the uh, our label was taking us out for something, I remember. And when the door opened on my floor, little Richard was there with his two bodyguards. And I, I walked in. I was like, how you doing, Mr. I go, um, well, we we got down to the floor, to the lobby, and the door opened up. And I looked at little Richard and I was like, "It's man, it's such an honor to say hello to you. Um, Mr. Richard and he was like oh it's all good baby you want a photo <laughs> and I was just like this is the most awesome thing ever you know and he couldn't have been you went but you were in the presence of just I mean dude you, you there are some people when you're in front of them that it is like a it is just a an energy man like this different kind of thing going on and that's one of those moments where like you could feel that just yeah. that rock star mm -hmm. like showmanship and just all of his diversity and what he brought to music in general, what he brought to rock and roll. So fangirled out on that. And last and final one, sure. um, I was in Nashville. We were uh, rehearsing at SIR. This is probably 2010 and went to the restroom and the, where we were at the rehearsal room we were next to, we were hearing just this, these, we were hearing these Led Zeppelin songs, but they were like country versions of them. And they were just crazy awesome. We were like, who is next door? And I go to the restroom and I'm using the restroom. And lo and behold, there's a man that comes up next to me in the urinal next to me. And it's Robert Plant. Come on. No, I'm dead serious. And uh, I went and washed my hands and walked outside and Zach was coming out of the rehearsal room to go to the restroom. And I was like, Hey, Robert Plan is in there. <laughs> and, and Zach was like, shut up, you know? And, um, and then Robert Plant comes out of the bathroom and Zach is just like, and I go, Mr. Plant, can we have a picture, sir? We know you're busy. We don't want to interrupt you or anything. And he's like, absolutely. And like, this was flip phone days too. Yeah. And like Zach took a picture with me and him. And then uh, Robert was so kind. He asked Zach, he's like, would you like one too? And Zach was like, please. And um, yeah, those were, those were our, my three moments of uh, inside. I uh, just uh, losing it, but I yes. kept my composure. See, so Christy, even rock stars, fangirl over other rock stars. Everybody's just people, right? So do you find, it, do you find it weird when people are, are you know, fanning out over you? Like if someone's standing next to you and trembling to get that photo, does that feel weird to you? Like is you no. know, being on that end of it? No, um, because my goal is to make them as comfortable as possible around me. If they're in front of me, it's one of the reasons why, like we do VIPs that are very, um, cause look, I'll just be straight up with you. Back in the day, we used to do like limitless VIPs and mm -hmm. there'd be 180 people every show. And it would take two and a half hours to go through it because we're not the band that sits behind a table and runs people through like cattle. We right. don't do it like that. Right. Um, and so we, we condensed it. Now we do 40 people and, and that's max. Um, and then obviously we, we still go out when we can after shows and see people, but we have a heavier schedule now. We can't do it all the time. Um, obviously we do anything that we possibly can for radio, especially during radio events or any of that, because radio is such a huge supporter of us and we wouldn't have our career if it wasn't for you guys and girls and supporting the music because you bring it to the people as well. Um, but I for. try to, I just try to always uh, make them as comfortable as possible. It's one of the reasons why somebody's shorter than me and they're talking to me about, you know, the music or, you know, what effect we've had, you know, on their lives and what have you. I always like, well, I'll split my legs, you know, and get like right down. <laughs> Cause I like to look at people in the eye. Sure. Um, so um, yeah, man, I try to just make them comfortable, you know, and just kind of like be like, it's all good. No reason to stress, you know, <laughs> we're just, hang we're just hanging out. Uh, well, hey, man, we've taken up uh, way more of your time than we should have already. Uh, we appreciate you hanging out and having lunch with us today uh, for an at home exclusive. Uh, we look forward to new Shine Down music. We look forward to Smith and Myers. Put out a song that I can sing on karaoke without blowing out my vocal cords. I will you don't do my mind. best. <laughs> I will do my best. Uh, you've been hanging out with Brett, uh, Brent Smith of Shine Down. Thank you very much once again. Again, go to shinedown.com, get that t shirt, proceeds, benefit, direct relief. Uh, Atlas Falls is the song. You can hear it on 1049 The X. Brent, thank you very much. Thank you for all the support as well, man. Thank you to all the listeners too. Much love and respect. Stay safe, be well, and uh, we'll see all y'all very, very, very soon. Thanks for the support. Same to you. Thank you. Appreciate it.